Hi guys, welcome back to Baldies on Tour, like Wednesday, with myself and with the beautiful Jo. So this week we've decided that we're going to do some talk on wigs and we want to talk a bit about cap construction, so all about the base, all about that base of your wig. Now, this is something which I found really would have helped me a lot in the beginning because I couldn't work out why some people could wear a wig and tie it back and it would look natural, other people would look like they had a parting, but I maybe didn't. So this is us going to do a wee bit of a rundown, make it easy for you guys. So to start off, here comes Jo. Lace fronts are awesome. They're not necessity. Some wigs don't need them. Uh, wigs with fringes don't need them. Uh, and some uh, caps, you know, wigs don't have a lace front all the time. Personally, I love a lace front. I like the look that it's growing out of my head. This is an example of a good lace front, especially um, in the lighter colours. I find that it's kind of uber realistic. It really, really does help because it just blends perfectly into your hairline. Um, and then you also get this kind of scalpy look because this one has a monotop as well. But lace fronts allow you to wear the hair um, off of your face. If you like to wear your hair in this kind of style, a lace front is definitely something to look for. Um, some lace fronts have to be glued um, or taped uh, and then some are ready to wear. Again, I lean towards the ready to wear personally um, just because I'm lazy and um, the gluing is a bit more of a faff. However, equally, um, some people like to glue or secure their lace fronts and you still get that really perfect look. I just want to point out that a um, lace front is actually a very fragile part of the wig as well. So when um, you are adjusting the wig on your head, it's really important to always use the ear tabs. They're like the steering wheel provided um, rather than tugging at the lace front. Um, tugging um, and unnecessary pressure on the lace front could lead to damage. Um, kind of once it starts to sh show signs of weakness in this in this section, it's it's really hard to come back. Hey guys, basically what I wanted to show you um, with this cap. Now this does not have a lace front on it, but I don't know how well we will be able to see this. If you have a look here, you will see that there is no lace front, but it does not look quite as harsh a line as what you would see often um, in a wig that does not have a lace front. That's because of the over under ventilation technique that's been used in creation of this. Now, I obviously have a full fringe cut onto this wig, but just to show you that, this one has the single monofilament, so just so you can see it here, versus the double. So the double has the lining, and then the single is, is like this. And then this one has the lace front. But the single, um, you can still part, it's still exactly the same. You can part it in um, any direction within this section, so you can change the part from side to side. This is a uh, monofilament top here, single monofilament, and then you've got the uh, lace front here, um, and then this has got the wefted back. So this is kind of sandwiched in between the hand tied cap with the monofilament, um, and then the monofilament part, which is kind of like one down from this. Some styles have a monofilament part instead of the whole section, being monofilament here to again keep the cost lower um, you just have the part with the lace front and so you are still getting the scalp look where the hair parts however the parting is fixed within this kind of I guess that's about an inch within this here um, so there's marginal room but um, you will still get that look of scalp going through French knotting or a French drawn top. Now this can have different kind of terms. When we talk about knotting techniques that could be a whole video within itself. There are so many but 
you know there's no point in getting bombarded with that just now basically a french top on a wig or sometimes they can be called a silk top depending on the method so basically what it is for example this is a french drawn top and if you look closely at my parting here you'll notice you cannot see any of the knots at all on the top of this wig so it does look very much like um, skin. Now the way that that is created, um, each company will do it slightly differently and they will all feel slightly differently depending on the materials that are used in conjunction with the type of knotting and the layers and also where your hair returns lie. But without going into great depth, um, let's just talk about one method of this being done. So the hair going into the wig will go through a layer of silk normally so we'll go through this silk layer which is where a lot of people get the name silk top from it goes through a layer of silk so the hair goes right through there it's not knotted onto that what's actually knotted onto is a layer in the middle normally of a very fine lace for example a swiss lace because it is so fine and then under that there will be another very fine layer of silk it just creates this very undetectable look it looks like it is literally your own scalp you cannot see a single knot it looks like the hairs are just right in your head. You can um, buy wigs that have got built-in silicon sections like this. So the cap on this is relatively basic. You've got um, wefted back and then the top is underneath is actually a uh, machine made. So there's no kind of monofilament top. There's no scalpiness. There's a very, very tiny little dot of hand tied at the crown. So then if you kind of look really hard, you can get like a tiny bit of um, a tiny bit of kind of scalp effect there only. However, this type of cap with the silicon in is just bloody brilliant on a windy day because it literally for a baldy like me, it suckers to your head practically. Um, so this this type of cap is designed for I would say 80 to 100% hair loss, but the secureness, the kind of feeling that you get from it fitting super well, uh, I would, yeah, it's just, it's a great um, added uh, extra that it has that in here. Um, alternatively though, I think that um, little silicon strips, uh, I have heard of people kind of adding it to their existing wig to kind of pimp their wig and, um, add that little bit of grip in there so it's quite a good um, suggestion and way to just help with added security if you are worried about um, your wig feeling loose. Silicone is something that is beneficial if you have total hair loss silicone is not beneficial if you have hair now the reason for that is because the silicone can actually pull on hair and um, if you have it can kind of pull if you have fine hair it can cause a wee bit of loss or it can cause just some discomfort so the next thing i'd like to talk about is another material that can often be added to cap now joe has spoken a bit about silicone and one thing that i wanted to cover very slightly is polyurethane sometimes wigs will have some silicone or some polyurethane incorporated in to them and let's just show you for example on this wig here you can see that the ear tabs here it's white here but sometimes it's absolutely colorless transparent this is actually polyurethane and um, polyurethane is very transparent normally it can be totally see-through with polyurethane you can use tape you can use adhesive whether that be an adhesive tape whether it is a kind of glue whatever you want to use that can be used against polyurethane now that can be really beneficial when you've got polyurethane at the ear tabs or say at the nape it's it can be really great because it just gives some additional security some people like to have that security and um, maybe if they're tying their hair up a lot just to prevent those sections from lifting so much this is something which is definitely for somebody who has total hair loss or if somebody has, you know, 
even just patchy hair loss but they shave their heads this is a wig that's designed for somebody with no hair it's not something that would be suitable if you do have hair underneath um, if you do have hair you would really have to shave for this type of cap to actually be of benefit to you now the wig that i'm wearing um, this is custom colored this is actually a human hair wig i am going to show you the cap um, i want to show you first of all just kind of having a wee look as is um, you will see if you have a wee look through here it is very, very natural. It's not a natural colour, but wherever you part this, you're going to see scalp throughout the whole thing. Now, this is actually a totally different cap than what you'll have seen so far. This is a full polyurethane cap. Now, this is actually a stock piece. This one here, um, a lot of polyurethane full caps tend to be maybe more something that would be done on the kind of custom side of things but this is actually a stock piece um and this does require a wee bit of work to be done to it and to be kind of trimmed to suit yourself and um, the actual base i'm going to turn this inside out to let you see the polyurethane okay so bear with me um different caps will always look slightly different from manufacturer to manufacturer now here's your polyurethane now it's quite shiny as you can see ignore all the dye all over it um now this actually has some single monofilament here um on the top and at the back as well now that monofilament just allows a wee bit of breathability but the rest of the cap is actually as you guys can see it is polyurethane now as i said to you wherever you split that it does look extremely natural this is colorless there is no color to that polyurethane so your own skin color whatever your skin color is is going to shine through this cap at every single area in that polyurethane where it is it looks very natural i think this is one of the most natural finishes in a cap one thing to remember is that um, if something looks extremely natural, normally the more natural something appears to be, the more fragile, the more delicate and the less hard wearing it is. Um, so, you know, there's always a bit of a balancing game in regards to wanting something to look as natural as possible but also wanting longevity from your cap there is no one size fits all when it comes to a wig cap it's very much personal so it's about what's best for you the best type of wig cap for me is not necessarily going to be Joe's favorite it's not going to be your favorite and you know we could all have the exact same type of alopecia but depending on what your lifestyle is and what you're looking for you know it doesn't mean the same thing there is no one size fits all or there would only be one kind of cap type out there and um, it's very much personal preference and you know there are many factors that go into that so we just want to kind of be able to explain to you guys a wee bit about the benefits the pros and cons of each <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,